Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the January 17, 2012 meeting of the Town of Cape Elizabeth Planning Board to order. I'd like to start by introducing our newest member, Peter Curry, who's down on the end there. His name tag isn't quite there yet, but will be next time. Um, we'll start out, we actually have three sets of minutes to approve tonight, and I'm going to take them individually, um, starting with the oldest one first, which is the um, minutes from our November 15, 2011 meeting. At our last meeting, there was a request to make an amendment to these minutes, so I will ask if anyone has any comments on these minutes as revised. I looked them over, and I don't have any comments. Thank you, Harumi. Great. Anyone else? Anyone like to make a motion for their approval? I'll make a motion for their approval. I said second. Carol Ann, all in favor? Okay, great. The next, oh, that, was, that was unanimous. The next is the um, minutes of our special meeting on December 9th, 2011. Um, do we have any comments on the minutes from that meeting? I looked them over also and I thought they were accurate. No comments. I'd just like to say that I, I really appreciate the thoroughness of these minutes and I think they very fairly reflect the rather complex discussion we had that during that meeting. So I want to thank all of you who worked to put that together. Well done. Do we have a motion? Henry, second. Carol Ann, all in favor? That's unanimous. The next is the minutes of our December 20, 2011 regular planning board meeting. Do we have any comments on those minutes? Victoria. I know that um, on page 8 the numbers are correct, but on page 1 um, we did discuss that uh, the 80 seat restaurant and the second retail would be um, not 1,250 square feet but 1,240. So I don't know if that needs to be changed there because it's correct on page eight. And then um, also the square footage of the wetland that will be altered, it should be 2,502, which is, like I said, correct on page eight. Maureen, I guess on page one, it's reflecting what the request was. So I'm, I'm not sure if we should re I don't think it, it's terribly important one way or the other. If, if planning board member Valent wants it to reflect, you actually approve. I don't see any problem with it. Page one reflects what was on the agenda. Okay. Uh, page eight reflects what you actually approved. Um, if you're worried about any confusion, updating it so they both have the same numbers does make more sense. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to update? If that, yeah, to avoid any confusion, if anyone was to pull that. And um, I was also, when I was talking to Pat, I noticed on his plans, once again, there were some things that um, reflected what we actually approved and others that didn't, such as note number four. I asked Pat if he would change that to read the proposed use of the phase one project as a restaurant for a total maximum seating of 80 and the proposed use of phase two project as a village retail shop. And I wasn't, because he had that note number four wrong on his plan, so I wanted him to change it. And then I did ask if he would um, change his note number 10 was also wrong. And I asked if he would change that to indicate the total square footage of wetland to be altered would be um, the 2,502. And I think those were friendly amendments. And I don't see them in, he in here. Okay. But I want to make sure that because Pat's, you know, the plat was incorrect. I want to make sure that he did make those corrections more than it's, so I wanted it to be in our minutes that we're asking him to make those corrections. So that goes into the conditions. But it wasn't, was it formally part of the vote or was it agreed to? I think I made a friendly amendment. It was part of the vote. Okay. I will, uh, so I wanted to add those into the meet, meeting uh, minutes just to make sure that whatever letter goes out to the applicant, it will reflect those amendments. 
Okay. Do you want those? Yes, I do. You do? Okay, I'll get those to you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyone else? All right. Anyone want to make a motion to approve the minutes, I guess, with those corrections? I'll make the motion. To All right. Victoria, second? Second. Joe? Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? That's six, and I'm abstaining since I was not in attendance at that meeting. Okay. We are through the minutes. The next item on our agenda is the election of officers for this current year. Um, we need to elect a planning board chair and vice chair for the current year. Would anyone like to make a motion? A motion to accept current chair and okay. continue for one year. Is there a second? Second. Joe, okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, I guess I should, well, I'll vote for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to continue, thank you. Um, and for the vice chair position, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Carol Ann? Uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we elect Victoria as our vice chair for the coming year. Do we have a second? Liza? Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Great, that's unanimous. Thank you, Victoria. The first item of old business the only item of old business on the agenda is the Powers Resource Protection Permit. Colin Powers and EOIN LLC are requesting a resource protection permit to fill 669 square feet of wetland to accommodate construction of a single family home located at Sunrise Drive and Lighthouse Point Road. Uh, resource protection permit, the applicant has requested to table the application. Would anyone like to discuss that request? If we decide to table it, then there is no further discussion. I have only one question I would like to ask. Maureen, um, I, would, I believe this would be our third time tabling this particular application. Is there a limit to the number of months that it can be tabled before it's essentially a new filing. There's nothing in the ordinance that limits the amount of time that you can table something that's already a pending application. However, in the past, the board has given a great deal of leeway in this kind of thing. But at some point, you've, you've said, OK, it's time to move on. Um, when you have done that, you have usually tabled it to a date and alerted the applicant that this is the last time so that you kind of give them a heads up that they need to either pull their application together or expect it to be denied. And that would be the only way to end the clock at this point. Okay. Would be, could, can it be withdrawn at this point? Um, yes. I don't see any reason why you couldn't get a formal request to withdraw it, okay. um, which would also stop the clock. Okay. I'm not suggesting we're at that point yet. It was just a question that had arisen because I do think this is the third time. Anyone else have any discussion on this item? Would anyone like to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion. Motion for the board to consider. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of E.ON, is that the right way to pronounce it? Oh, thank you. Owen, LLC, with Colin Powers as manager for a resource protection permit to fill 669 square feet of RP2 wetlands to accommodate construction of a new single family home located at 7 Lighthouse Point Road be tabled to the February 27, 2012 meeting of the planning board. Do we have a second? Second. Carol Ann, any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. That is table. All right, we have one item of new business on the agenda. Tenno Rosewood subdivision amendment. 
Joseph Tenno and Gail Clinton are requesting an amendment to the Rosewood subdivision to expand the building envelope for lot three, located at three Rosewood Drive, section 1625, amendments to previously approved subdivisions. We'll have a presentation from the applicant and then there will be a public comment period. Thank you, Madam Chair. Go ahead there. Members of the board, uh, Rick Light uh, with Light Environmental Design, and uh, with me is the applicant, Joe Tenno. <coughs> and uh, the, just as a clarification, just to make sure we have this right, it's the address is 6 Rosewood Drive. The, uh, the lot is lot number three on the Rosewood subdivision plan. I'm not sure if that was uh, addressed correctly, but just for the record. Um, simply, the, the project we're proposing, going back to our sketch plan meeting in December, um, and behind you is a, the proposed amended plat, is a, an amendment to the existing building envelope on the existing lot. And the lot, again, is, is considered as lot three in the Rosewood subdivision. I, I have this graphic of the, uh, uh, of the uh, lot, which is the amended plat. I'm also going to flip in a minute to a graphic showing the overall subdivision to give a, a bit better picture. But for the time being, this is Rosewood Drive, the, the north end of Rosewood Drive, which is a 50-foot right-of-way and a private, it's a private right-of-way. This is the subject lot, which is about 0.82 acres. And you recall that Rosewood was a, an approved subdivision back in 1992, which contained five lots and had subsequent amendments over the years up to 2003, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is a lot within, uh, an approved lot within that subdivision. And as we discussed at the sketch plan, what happened when that subdivision was approved was that lots were provided with, through negotiation apparently between the board and the applicant, were provided with what I'm looking here, which is a clearing envelope, which is the green. They were also provided with building envelopes. And this is a built, current building envelope is, excuse me, building envelope is somewhere in through here. It's hard to see. My hand would stop shaking. And around in here. And the difference being that at the time we assume that some of the differences in the building envelope versus the clearing envelope that we discussed at sketch plan was to allow for things like septic systems and, and, and that's normal clearing for lawn, et cetera, around the house. So what Mr. Tenno is requesting, and if I can hold this pen steady enough, is where this is the current building envelope, is simply to amend that envelope in this area right here, which is basically expanding at 12 feet in that direction and nine feet in that direction. And it's to serve two purposes. One is there is an existing deck, which we talked about at sketch plan, which when the lot was purchased by Mr. Tenno and Gail Clinton in, in a year or two ago, that deck was already, unbeknownst to them, non-conforming. It was issued a building permit uh, probably back in 1994, but unbeknownst to them, uh, it was not actually conforming with the subdivision setbacks. It met the sub, uh, excuse me, it met the subdivision setbacks. It did not meet the setbacks of the building window, which were in the approved subdivision plan. It, it more than met the RC district, which is in setbacks, but not those of the plan. So they bought this unbeknownst. So we're asking for that building window to be amended to surround the deck. And in this area here, which is his current garage, he wants, he's proposing to do an expansion and we're asking that that building window be amended again from the current location about 12 feet out uh, in this direction. And in doing so, there's some photographs in the application that the board members have that show that the lot is, is pretty much wooded all throughout, obviously outside the clearing envelope. And in, in this area and through here, and this in no way affects any of the wooded areas on the lot. It doesn't affect, it doesn't require cutting. 
It's simply to amend the building envelope to allow him to have better enjoyment of his lot and do a reasonable expansion of his home and his property. Um, it's not something unreasonable. And one of the things that I'm going to flip here for a second, if I can use Maureen's computer, being a Windows guy, I'll see if I can, I guess I'll close this out here with me. <clears throat> and I think this is it. And we will rotate this tri-clockwise. And the board had asked at the sketch plan meeting that we prepare a plan or a graphic, <clears throat> excuse me, that showed the lot, and I hope this is, accomplishes what the board is asking for. It shows the lot in relation to the surrounding lots in the subdivision. This is lot three, lot one, two, uh, four A and B, which were just subdivided recently, the board will recall, and the rest of the open space of the subdivision. This is all open space. And what this graphic portrays was the relationship of, to give you the board a sense of the scale and size of the other lots and the size and scale of their building envelopes and clearing envelopes. And on this plan, the line, uh, the line here, the, the yellow, the darker line here, is the edge of the clearing envelope. The areas that are striped are part of the clearing envelope right here for purposes of septic. And the building envelopes are the remaining piece here, here. Uh, this lot is here in a large building envelope for this lot here. So you can see from the proposed building envelope relative to the two other lot, three other lots, excuse me, actually four other lots, the building envelope even with a proposed addition is, is smaller than the current building envelope. So it's not out of context with the neighboring lots. And again, it won't affect any of the wooded areas on a lot. And so we think this is a pretty de minimis change to the approved plan in order to allow him to do a, a simple expansion on a lot and for better enjoyment of the lot. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Um, we have, in terms of review of the application, we have received a letter from the town engineer dated January 6th, which discussed that, there, that they agree that there's no real issue with drainage. What we're talking about is very modest and, and typical uh, in a subdivision neighborhood. It doesn't require any need to address stormwater for something of this magnitude relative to the overall project. So I think we're, we're in good standing there. And I think that pretty much addresses the application. It's pretty much that simple. Um, at least we think it is. And I would like to open it up to the board for any questions. Does anyone on the board want to ask questions before we open it up for public comment? Joe. Does, would this require approval by the other um, people who live in the subdivision? No, I do not believe so. But uh, do, do you have a... I have approval from the, what they call him, the chairman of... The, the association the president. They association have approval. President. Yes. He was the first person to sign on. Yes. Whether it's required, I'm, I can't, I'm not absolutely certain of that. But we do have a sign-off from the association president uh, in agreement with this. Has that been put on record? We can certainly provide that to the board if that's if the board requests so. Liza? Do we know, Maureen, why the building envelope for this lot was so much smaller than the building envelopes in the other <coughs> in the subdivision? You know, whenever a subdivision is proposed, abutters are concerned. There's always an effort, well, there's usually an effort by the applicant to address the concerns of the abutters. And so it was the applicant who came up with this idea of a clearing envelope and a building envelope. And you know, they knew where they wanted to put the septic system in order to preserve the building site for the home. And this is what they came up with. And my next question is, um, if this um, deck is non-conforming because it's outside of the building envelope, is that something we necessarily have to address? Or can we just leave it out there that it's non-conforming and it's not up to us to rectify. Um, it, it, it is going to be a problem that will dog this lot. Um, I guess I realized that Mr. Tenno was, didn't require financing to purchase his home. If he tries to sell this home to anyone else who needs financing, they will probably have a mortgage survey done 
they will probably find that the deck is outside the area where it's legally allowed to be, and it will cloud the title to the lot until it's cured. And one way to cure it, is, and this board has done that, is there are, I can think of at least four or five examples where, oops, people ended up building where they weren't supposed to, and the planning board has amended the building envelope for the lot, um, for the subdivision, in order to cure that problem. Another way to cure it would be to tear the deck off. But it's, it's usually not a problem you can ignore if you need financing. Thank you. You're welcome. Why don't we open the public comment period if there are any members of the public here tonight who would like to speak to this application, please come forward and say your name and give us your comments. Seeing no one, we will close the public comment period and open it up to members of the board for questions. Carol Ann. I don't have a question, I just have a statement. It seems that uh, the request for extension of the building envelope still keeps this well within the clearing envelope and it, it, it doesn't seem to be, I don't see any reason not to approve it. That would be my position. Anyone else have any comments? Victoria? I would agree. I was looking at this and I would agree. Um, my only comments would be towards the, the flat here. This makes a couple of changes, if could be. If um, we could add on um, note number five, the book and the page. Would I'm sorry, what was that? I couldn't hear you. On the um, plan here? Yeah. Note number five? Yes. Would it be okay to add the book and the page? Uh, as the, all the other notes have their book in the page? Uh, we could. I, that's a, our surveyors did the research. They didn't find that that information was available at the registry yet. That was, that was a recent subdivision of lot, of Vistachi lot here. And they did not have, they could not find uh, the, the book and page. Maybe you could go back and mention book 211, page 333, and see if it matches up. But they'll also find that it was revised through May 5th, 2011. That's when this board last looked at it. At that lot, are you, are you suggesting that it has been recorded? I, I guess we, we, it has been. <coughs> okay, we will add that, thank you. And I was also looking at the easement of record, note number three. There's a typo. Um, that book number is, um, should be 29105. Instead of 203? Instead of 29101, the book. 29105. Should be five, yeah. Thank you for picking that up. Thank you very much. And that would be it. We'd be glad to make those changes. Thank you. Anybody else? Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. As soon as I, I, as soon as I find it. <laughs> Findings of fact. Joseph Tano and Gail Clinton are requesting amendment to the previously approved Rosewood subdivision to expand the building envelope for lot three which requires review for compliance with section 16-3-1 of the subdivision ordinance. Two, the application substantially complies with the standards of the subdivision ordinance section 16-3-1. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Joseph Tenno and Gail Clinton for an amendment to the previously approved Rosewood subdivision to expand the building envelope for lot three be approved. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is the last item on our regular meeting agenda tonight. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn in just a moment, and we will go off the air for broadcast. For those of you who are sitting here um, in the hall tonight, we are having a special workshop session on another matter. Works workshop sessions are not 
broadcast, but don't, don't be concerned. We are going to go forward as soon as this meeting adjourns. So would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn our regular January meeting? Joe? Move to adjourn. Do we have a second? Liza? All in favor? That's unanimous, and we are adjourned. Thank you.